we are live. Welcome to Welcome to Ms. Marvel Episode 3 Thoughts. So great dramatic music over the opening logos, and we see what happened in 1942 at the partition. We learn a lot from that. And it's on a blue the, the bangle is on a blue arm, so could be Cree. And we're told they need both, but they only they're only able to find the one. So I'm guessing the other one would show up, maybe in the Marvels. And a, a cut, and we see that you know she told everything to Kamala. Although later we realize not quite everything, but what we saw, she was also telling Kamala. And Kamala's so relieved that the boy she's got a crush on is actually 17 and not from the 40s. You're right, she is adorable, and he's uncomfortable that she knows. And she encourages Kamala, which, you know, is a bit of a thing. She's trying to figure out if what she's doing is good or not. The list goes on. Does it include Inhumans? And we're told that they're Jin and... Bruno, clueless about at least this aspect of her culture, goes Antonic? And let's see. Right, Eric Selvig is brought up again, very cool, and you know, as others have pointed out, 100% that is something that Bruno would know. Nakia steps up to get the damage control agents to come back with a signed warrant, and I believe she's absolutely correct. Yeah, the, the you know, private property, you have to have probable cause. Like, if they heard a gunshot, they're allowed to enter, you know, or someone screaming or something. But otherwise, yeah, signed warrant, you know, you, you got to get a judge to sign a warrant in order to get in. And, you know, some have pointed out, that may just have been the the boost she needed to, to make it onto the board. And Kamala studies the video of her superheroics with kid with interest. And you know, Nakia comes in and she did become a board member, maybe. And Kamala's so happy for her, but also obviously also worried about being found out. And Kamala called Nakia Squishy, which I'm guessing is a nickname she got as a child or something. I don't think they need to explain that because that's just that's a great detail, you know. I think we already knew that she's that they've been friends since childhood, but yeah, it's a great little uh let's see. Yeah, it's still running. You know, it it's it's a term of endearment and it's basically Kamala saying to Nakia, We've been friends forever. You can talk to me. You know, you came into my room for a reason. Let's let's do this. Let's let's get to you know. Let's let's deal with your issues. We can you know. We're I'm I'm here for you. And the entire family are gathered get gathered before the wedding, and they hit all of Amir's shoes. So that's what that kid running at the start of the scene. Had, you know, I I noticed he had shoes, and I was like, I don't get it, but yeah, not that it bothered me. I love how Kamala is talking to different people about the superhero stuff and her decision about helping the djinn. And her mother talks about how difficult it was early on having moved to America and that Kamala isn't alone. And Bruno and Kamala's dad talk djinn and he translates because, yeah, some of this stuff is, you know, maybe difficult to get your hand on, you know, translations into English. You know, if like unless you're studying it, it's not really something that we English speak. You know, first, you know, English first language. Yeah, English native speakers are you know dealing with a lot. Like there are, you know, I'm sure like articles about the the uh, various hair coverings and the the prayer since there are converts. What do they call them? Reverts? Yeah. And... And Amir doesn't have that much money saved up. He's worried about the future, but his father encourages him. And, you know, it's, it's, it is really all about the love. The wedding is very sweet. 
And yeah, others have pointed out, I think it was Desi Dender who said, what one text message and suddenly they're, you know, the, the heel turn, they're, they're going to go evil on her. It's like, that was fast. Like th this is a show. I, I don't mind it that much. And I really love the show, but I will admit there are times where they, they're in a rush. And we see them dancing at the wedding. I love how unafraid and unashamed the show is about the culture. It's showing things that a lot of Americans have never seen before. It's not being ironic. It's not trying to ease people into it. Because there's absolutely nothing wrong with what is being shown here. It doesn't hurt anyone. Look at this celebration. Look at how much fun everyone there is having. This is incredible when you think about how much hate is directed at minorities, including Muslims, in other American media, especially conservative media. You know, ju just the other day, I, I talked about this episode with a friend of mine who's also seen it, and, you know, I brought up the movie The Siege, which I love most things about. I think it's a great movie overall, but it is really uncomfortable how, like, some of the depiction of Muslims in that movie, it, yeah. And, and yeah, you know, now... 24 years later, we're in a much better, you know, there is still hatred in other, but, you know, millions of Americans are going to see this, and they're going to be like, oh, that's, that's Islam? That doesn't look so bad. I'm pretty sure I saw the creator of the comic, I want to say her name is Sana Latan, in the crowd at the wedding during dancing, very cool cameo, and I think it's fair to call her part of the extended family in a meta sort of way. John Bon Jovi cover band called Brown Jovi. Love it. And the djinn come into the mosque. Kamala gets everyone out by pulling the fire alarm. And then she has to fight off some of them and set to living on a prayer, which I'm guessing is a Bon Jovi song. I thought the action was well handled. At least you look very pretty. So do you. Bridal solidarity. Great to see. And Bruno helps Kamala out, and so does Cameron. I swear he gets my name wrong on purpose. If so, that's dedication. He's getting his ass kicked, and he's still calling you Brian. And Kamala gets knocked down, stops moving. Kamala sees the vision of the train very clearly now. Damage control take the gin into custody. So they were still watching. So they were still watching. I guess maybe going off following Nakia around, since she was trouble for them. And or the imam, since, you know, they probably hated that he asked them to take off their shoes next time they come in. Which is also great, like, I'm not worried about you coming back. You can come back. We have nothing to hide. Please be respectful of our culture. Again, they're not doing anything wrong. Why wouldn't you? You know, I, I saw online, maybe Twitter, where, like, someone said, why do, why are white people always going into your house not taking off their shoes? And it is, you know, the first time I was like, we do do that. What the, what is with that? Like, why, like, I, I'm not sure I've ever been inside the, the house of, you know, someone, else. but, but yeah, it is like, why wouldn't we take off our shoes? At the, to be fair, some some do. You know, depends on we. You know, but yeah, you know, a bunch of people don't, and it's like, why not just take your shoes off? You know, what what are you afraid of stepping on inside? You know, okay, I guess there could be like Legos lying around, but just you know, watch where you're going. I've never really understood. I've never stepped on a Lego, and I've had like a room of Legos, but I was always very careful about. Not leaving them around, but still, just watch where you're going. I, I guess, if, okay, if you're, like, running, maybe. I'm going to get back to the notes now. Yeah, we see them using, I think those are the same guns that disabled Kamala's powers at the end of episode two, and now they disable the Jin powers. Now I'm just wondering if every single episode is going to end with or have a post credit scene where the damage control agents do something important. I mean, we're three for three. Nakia realizes that Kamala is the hero, feels betrayed that she didn't tell her. You know, it, and, and that is, like, I mean, Bruno is her guy in the chair, but Nakia, you know, they trust each other. 
and Kamala comes home, the fire alarm is brought up, and they know that the people she was with were arrested. They're hurt. She won't tell them the truth. Nani calls and tells Kamala that she and her mother have to come to Karachi because she sold the train too. And we see the Kamala cell phone background is a drawing of Captain Marvel. Very cool. But yeah, it wouldn't be a Disney Plus MCU show without at least a little globe trotting. The only one I can think of that doesn't travel in space is WandaVision, and that travels in time, so. Another episode I love, psyched to see the next one. Now, there's not a lot of visual creative stuff in this episode. I saw someone say, you know, she's growing up. She's not seeing things quite as childish as before, so, yeah. And I love the detail that Kamala's father likes the synthetic candy. His wife doesn't want him to eat it. You know, she's probably like, we have a Pakistani you know, part of town. We can buy the, the you know, I'll cook you Pakistani food. You know, we can buy the, the you know, the ingredients and, and stuff. And, you know, I love the father translating Urdu into English for Bruno. They're always helping each other. You know, he, he doesn't think of, uh, you know, like, he, he probably can't imagine Bruno keeping a secret from him. You know, why, why would he? That's, there's no reason for that, you know. And it's also, you know, he comes up, how are you with secrets? And and Bruno is like, does he know? Is he gonna ask? It, you know, is he gonna, like, be, I think you and Kamala are keeping something from me and my wife, you know, and just, yeah. So, so the, and I'm not sure that, Bruno would be great at standing up to someone, like, asking him directly about it. I don't, don't think that's happened so far in the show. And, and someone pointed out that, you know, apparently that synthetic candy thing is something that Marvel Comics used to have, like, ads for, and it was really obnoxious and obvious, so that's also a play on, you know, him coming in and saying, I love how it tastes, you know, sorry about the accent, I love how it tastes. It's, I know it's synthetic, but it's just, it's right for me. And here, this is the name of the candy. You should go buy some audience, you know. So, so yeah, that's great. Yeah, I... I gotta stop just saying that I love this show because it's getting old. I know some of the MCU shows ended up being what disappointing in later episodes, but I really do think they're doing a great job for so far, like... No episode so far has introduced too much, and it's also moving quite nicely. Well, you know, we're halfway through the show. We've met the antagonists. I don't know if they're outright villains or, you know, mainly antagonists. We know where the powers come from. Kamala is getting pretty good at using the powers. And, you know, yeah, we've gotten some background, and clearly we're going to get more. You know, I would say we're probably going to learn something major again in next episode, but certainly somewhere in Karachi, they're going to learn something extremely important, and that's going to be at some point in the next three episodes. You know, I don't think that this show will have a Captain uh, uh, Carol Danvers cameo. I think it's going to end similarly to WandaVision with someone going up to Kamala and saying, you know, there's someone who wants to meet you and you know the the you know yeah in in wandavision there's you know pointing up because that's it's up there that you're meeting someone which means either nick fury carol possibly both yeah you know i'm thinking that's yeah my my theory is that the show will end with someone saying, you know, the someone else has some information about the bangle and they want to, you know, they want to talk to you about it. And, you know, Kamala at first is a little unsure. And then, let's see, she'll probably, yeah, the other one will probably say, she's an Avenger, very powerful Avenger. Some would say the strongest of it, you know, and as she's, as those words are leaving that person's mouth, Kamala is going to be like, no way. 
and smash cut and it's a uh, like a drawing probably of yeah and it's it's Kamala having drawn like her meeting Captain Marvel for the first time and being like you know a huge you know, geeking out about it I'm thinking the first real meeting between the two characters is going to be in the Marvels and it's going to be hilarious because it's like I do not think that Carol Danvers is going to know exactly how to deal with someone who's such a fan of her. You know, yeah, she was a badass, and she was, like, doing stuff that nobody, you know, no other woman had done before her in this situation. But she's not really, we haven't seen her among fans, really. So, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that's going to be, I, you know, yes, we had a similar dynamic with Tony and Peter, but, you know, these are very different characters from Tony and Peter. So yeah, I I'm I'm thinking that's gonna be really fun and like there's gonna be parts where like Kamala is like you know yeah she probably she's probably gonna show uh, um like she probably yeah she's got she's got like cell phone smartphone pictures of her in costume maybe she'll even show something from AvengerCon. And Carol is going to be like, you recreated my spacesuit with, you know, I, I don't know, what what is it made of, whatever, you know, she's going to, you know, and, and Kamala might be completely clueless and not realize that she's, you know, that that's almost kind of like a diss and she's going to be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, you know, just, yeah, I, I really, I, you know, she's going to be starry-eyed for a lot of the movie. And maybe there'll be like a moment halfway through near the last third or something where Carol makes a mistake. And Kamala is like, I didn't realize that, you know, you know, the, the kind of thing that, you know, Peter also realized near the end of, you know, uh, Far From Home with Happy telling him, you know, because all he saw was victorious Tony Stark, Tony you know the the like the nervous breakdown and these various things you know regular people didn't see that or you know not regular people i i sincerely doubt that harvey is like out there saying i totally saw tony stark break down you know and yeah let's see who else uh people he killed uh, you know um man not mandarin but yeah yeah the the Guy Pierce in Iron Man 3, and Pepper, and she's not going to go out there and, and share all these dirty secrets. I mean, you know, she specifically, that, you know, one of the things she did was help protect his image, so, yeah. And, you know, there's going to be an interesting dynamic between Carol and, I want to say Monica? The, um the Rambo that is still alive in 616. Um, yes, I am going with calling the MCU 616. Yeah, you know, because apparently there's some bad blood according to WandaVision, and certainly there is this thing of, like, maybe she feels abandoned for all those years. You know, her mother died and Carol wasn't there. So, yeah. I think that's everything I have. So, yeah, absolutely loved it. Can't wait to see more. And there we go.